Welcome back to our channel at Sunshine Teachers Training. Today we're diving into an amazing concept that sits at the heart of Montessori education, the Montessori work cycle. You might be thinking, work cycle? This sounds really complex, but it's actually a beautifully simple, child-centered way of learning. By the end of our time together, you will see why it is so transformative. Now, let's talk about the Montessori work cycle, which is sometimes referred to as a three-hour work cycle. This might sound like a lot of time, especially when you think about young children. But here's the exciting part. This block of time is dedicated solely to independent, self-directed work. You might be imagining a chaotic scene right now, right? But it's far from that. In a Montessori classroom, this looks like children moving about gracefully around the room, exploring materials that have captured their curiosity and deeply focusing on tasks that they've chosen for themselves. This is where the unique strength of the Montessori method comes through. Instead of being told what to learn and when children are given the freedom to choose the activities based on their own interests, it's about harnessing the power of their innate curiosity and their desire to explore this world around them. Here's what's truly fascinating. Every child works at their own pace. There's no rush to finish an activity to keep up with the rest of the group. If a child wants to spend the entire work cycle mastering one activity, that's completely fine. It's about them owning their learning journey. And it isn't just aimless exploration. The children are deeply engaged in their chosen task until they reach a natural point of completion. This could mean repeating an activity until they feel satisfied or deciding that they're ready to move on to something new. So you see, the Montessori work cycle is a masterful blend of freedom and structure. It's a time when the classroom buzzes with beautiful sounds of active learning, the click of wooden blocks, the swish of water for cleaning, the quiet rustle of pages turning. And at the heart of it all, the child is steering their own learning journey with joy and confidence. But let's dig a little deeper. The work cycle has four magical phases. Choice, exploration, concentration, and completion. These stages flow together, creating a rhythm of learning that's fulfilling and meaningful. The first step in this magical cycle is choice. But let's pause for a moment and think about this choice. It's not just randomly picking up something from a huge box of activities. It's much deeper than that. It's, a, it's about a child tuning into what they want. What are they curious about? Their personal interests. And they choose work that really fascinates and captivates them. Can you see the beauty in that? The seed of learning is planted not by external force, but from internal drive. When children are the ones making their own choices, they feel a strong sense of ownership. It boosts their motivation and their readiness to go deeper into their own learning. Now here's where the role of the Montessori prepared environment comes into play. Picture a warm, inviting space, carefully designed and prepared with a variety of activities and materials that are designed to captivate these young minds. There's no random clutter here. Each piece of material has a specific purpose and learning goal. When a child walks into this space, they're entering a world of discovery that's tailored to nurture their development. So when a child chooses an activity, whether it's pouring water between jugs, matching shapes, or sorting color, or doing math with the beads, they're making a conscious decision. They're choosing to engage with their environment in a way that's meaningful to them. It's like saying, this is what I want to explore today. This is what I want to learn about. And that's so empowering, isn't it? This choice isn't just about the here and now. It's about settling the foundation for lifelong learning. By encouraging choice, we're fostering self-directed learners capable of making decisions and taking charge of their education. And these skills, my dear parents, this will equip them not just for school, but for life. 
All right, now our little learners have made their choice. So what's next? Welcome to the second stage, which is the exploration stage. This is where the hands-on adventures begin, where learning transforms into a sensory engaging journey. Imagine your little explorer setting foot on an uncharted land. That's exactly how children feel as they start interacting with their chosen activity. It's a whole new world to discover, a treasure chest of learning to unlock. This might involve pouring water, sorting shapes, feeling rough sandpaper letters, or maybe tracing a beautiful wooden puzzle map. Each activity designed to stimulate their senses fosters a deeper, more tangible connection with what they're learning. And here's a fascinating aspect. Exploration can look so different for each child, kind of like a fingerprint, unique and personal. Some children are whizzing through an activity, their curious minds racing with excitement. Other children may adopt a more measured pace, taking their sweet time to examine a question, to absorb to absorb every little detail and take in everything that's around them. And in Montessori, we cherish this diversity because remember, it's not a race. It's a journey of discovery. In Montessori, this diversity is celebrated. Speed is not the goal here. It's about the journey, the exploration. It's about allowing the child to completely immerse themselves in their work. And they're fully absorbing the knowledge at their own pace, in their own way. And during this exploration, a wonderful transformation happens. The, the child isn't just doing, they're understanding, they're internalizing, they're connecting with their work on a very deep level. And that is where true learning happens. Now you might be wondering, what if my child makes a mistake? What if they spill water while pouring or they struggle to fit a shape into its matching socket? Let me reassure you, that's not just okay, it's fantastic. Yes, you heard me right. In the Montessori approach, we don't frown upon mistakes. Quite the contrary. We see these mistakes as precious stepping stones to learning. When a child spills water, they're not just making a mess. They're grasping the concept of volume. They're understanding cause and effect. When they can't fit a shape into its socket, they're not failing. They're learning about size, shapes, spatial relationships. Each stumble, each struggle is an opportunity to discover, to problem solve, to learn. It's in these moments that they're not just learning about their work, they're learning about life. So. We've chosen our activity, we've explored it with all our senses, and now, guess what's next? We're stepping into the concentration stage. Now, this stage is very special. You know those moments when you see a child so wrapped up in what they're doing that it's like they're in their own little world? Maybe they're focusing so hard on lining up those beads just right, or they're carefully pouring rice without spilling a single grain. That right there is concentration in action. During this stage, something amazing is happening. It's like a deep dive into learning. The child is fully in the zone. Their attention is glued to their task. Their little brains are busy making connections, understanding concepts and soaking up so much knowledge. This kind of focused, hands-on learning is what we absolutely love about Montessori. And here's the thing, we in the Montessori world treasure these moments of deep concentration. We see it as a precious time when real, deep down learning is happening. That's why you won't see a teacher rushing them to finish or moving them on to the next thing. No way! We let them take their time to really get stuck into their learning. It's about their journey at their pace. Okay friends, so now we're at the last step of our journey, the completion stage. Now don't think of it as just the end of the road because it's way more than that. In fact, this is where we get to see the real beauty of the Montessori way. 
Now in a conventional classroom, you might hear a bell ringing or the teacher telling everyone it's time to stop clapping, stopping everybody. But in a Montessori classroom, guess who decides when they are done? That's right. It's the child themselves. They are the boss of their own learning journey. So how do they know when they are done? Well, it could be when they finish the task that they set out to do, like getting all those beads lined up or counting up to 1000 or when they've solved a problem, like figuring out, figuring out how to pour water without spilling. Or sometimes they might just feel like they're done and that's okay too. But wait, there's more. After they're done, they tidy up and put everything back where it belongs. Why do they do this? Well, it's their way of showing respect to the classroom and to the next child who will use those materials. And it also teaches them responsibility. So you see, even cleaning up is a lesson in Montessori. So you see, this thing that we call the Montessori work cycle is not just about how we arrange our time. No, it's way more special than that. It's like an exciting journey, a voyage of self-discovery, where children get to find out what they're capable of and develop a true love of learning. Imagine how empowering it is for a child to manage their own time, to decide for themselves what they want to explore and how to learn from their own experiences. It's pretty awesome, right? And that too, at the age of below six. It helps them learn to trust their own instincts from a young age, follow their curiosity and understand that it's okay to make mistakes because it's just another way to learn. And it's just so beautiful, so natural, this Montessori way of learning. Don't you agree? It reminds us that learning is not about rushing through lessons or ticking off boxes. No, it's about the joy of discovering, really understanding what you're learning and growing at your own pace. The Montessori work cycle tells us that it's okay to take your time, to be curious and to enjoy the process. After all, isn't that what childhood and learning should be all about? Don't you wish you had this opportunity? Now I want to pause here and consider a big question. What makes the Montessori work cycle so different and in my opinion, better than what you might find in conventional schools? This is a really important point to discuss. In many non-Montessori schools, the day is often broken down into segments with each subject given a fixed amount of time, whether it's math, science or English. The bell rings and that signals that it's time to switch to another subject. And if you are in the middle of solving a fascinating problem or just about to finish a thrilling story, it doesn't matter. You have to wrap it up and move on. In contrast, the Montessori work cycle nurtures the child's natural rhythm of learning. It gives them the space and time to fully immerse themselves in what they're doing. They can spend as long as they need at an activity, exploring it from all angles until they feel satisfied and their curiosity is quenched. It's this level of deep engagement that's often missing in a non-Montessori setting. In a Montessori classroom, we believe that when children are given the freedom to follow their interests and work at their own pace, they become active learners who are motivated and they love to learn. It's about the journey of discovery rather than just simply reaching a destination. In this way, the Montessori work cycle supports children in becoming not only better learners, but also creative thinkers, problem solvers, and respective members of their community. And isn't that what we want for all our children? Okay, dear friends, our deep dive into the Montessori work cycle has come to an end for today. But remember, our learning journey together will continue. We'll uncover more Montessori gems in our upcoming videos. Now, if you found this video helpful and you want to give me a little virtual high five, go ahead and click the like button and make sure that you don't miss our future chats. So hit the subscribe button. It's like signing up for an adventure in the wonderful world of Montessori learning. 
I want to say a huge thank you to all of you for spending your time with me, for your comments, for coming back week after week. And until we meet again, continue learning, continue exploring, and most importantly, have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.